We are members of the Armenian Church, and we believe in the faith of our forefathers. But we also act on that faith. Fasting, personal reflection, meditation and contemplation, prayer, reading Holy Scripture, worshiping together and participating in the sacraments. These are spiritual practices of the Armenian Church. Good evening and welcome everybody to this, the fourth episode of Spiritual Practices. Our last episode, which was about meditation, uh, was great. We had our first uh, guest interview, which uh, I think was very well received. I want to thank Father Kikwar again for his time. Um, I also want to thank everybody who watched and uh, who participated with their questions and comments. It means a lot to me to have you all actively participating in this um, in this journey, in this in this exploration that we're on uh, to find more about how we can act upon what we believe um, as Christians, uh, as Armenian Apostolic Christians. Uh, today's topic is prayer, and uh, if you watched our previous episodes, if you watched particularly meditation, um, you will note that we've talked about prayer before. However, um, meditation is a form of prayer, and there are, of course, other forms of prayer uh, that deserve to be uh, discussed. And today we're going to be talking about personal prayer. We'll be talking about communal prayer um, in one of the upcoming episodes about worship. But today we're going to be talking about um, you know, the sort of prayer, general prayer, that you and I would be engaged in on any given day. Um, prayer is one of the most basic elements of faith. We find uh, the act of prayer uh, in uh, most religious expressions. Um, we find that prayer in and of itself becomes a sort of radical statement on behalf of the person who is praying. Because to pray is to proclaim the following things. One, that there is a God. Um, of course, if there was no God, then to whom would we be praying? Uh, we proclaim that there is a God by praying, uh, somebody who will hear our requests and our prayers. Uh, we proclaim that that God has some sort of authority or dominion over the universe. Um, if that God did not have the ability to do anything or um, didn't care to do anything about the universe that we're all a part of, then again, our prayer uh, would be an act in vain. So it is to say that there is a God and that that God uh, is able to do something about the world that we're a part of right now, temporally speaking, and that that God cares, that that God wants to hear what we have to say to him, and that that God who, uh, who exists and who uh, is able to affect this world uh, and would listen to us cares about us to the degree that he would do something, that he would change something or make a difference in this world that we're a part of because of that uh, caring uh, emotion that he has towards us. So simply saying a prayer to God is a very profound uh, proclamation of someone's faith. There are people who pray today who don't prescribe to any particular uh, system of faith. Um, you know, they certainly, I imagine... That their that their prayerful act, you know, becomes for them um, something powerful in their own lives, and 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 that in of itself is testimony uh, to the power of prayer, to the truth of prayer. Um, but nonetheless, uh, for us in our prayer as Christians, uh, we accept a certain context, we accept a certain uh, teaching and understanding about what prayer is and about what it does. Prayer is so fundamental to faith that often we don't respect it or appreciate it. Prayer can seem like a penny. They're ubiquitous, and often we don't find them very useful. But pennies make up the vast sum of our treasury. Without each and every penny, there would be uh, no dimes, there would be no quarters, there would be no dollars. So pennies make up uh, you know, the vast wealth that we're... And so it is with our with our prayers. Our prayers, each and every one of them, though sometimes 
um, we seem as almost, uh, we seem as though they're like just throwaways, you know, just a sentence maybe to God. It may seem as though the impact isn't um, terribly pertinent, but in truth, the uh, sum total, the effect of those small little prayers um, become the foundation upon which our faith is built. Um, so if we, there is a God, and that God can affect this world, and that same God wants to listen to us and do something about, then how do we pray? You know, what, what sort of system are we a part of that we can lean, to, lean on or look to to give us some guidance when it comes to, to prayer? Uh, the first thing that comes to mind are the prayers of our forefathers, of course. When we come to church on a Sunday morning, um, although we're all engaged in personal prayer, we're all participating in a communal prayer that has been developed by our church fathers for us to participate in. Oftentimes, those prayers seem impersonal to us. They're not our prayers. They're not genuine or sincere because we didn't come up with them ourselves. But these prayers are very important because um, they're like uh, signposts that guide us along our prayer life. Uh, though we don't have to pray for them, and most often we don't, uh, those prayers, when we make them the prayer of our own heart, can express so much of what we believe often better than, than we can at any given moment. I want to share with you a prayer from St. Gregory of Nautic, whom I've mentioned before in this program. Uh, just to give you an idea of what it is, the beauty that he's expressing in one of his prayers uh, from the Book of Lamentations. He says, The path of Creator's providence is above the limit of judgment in the minds of angels and those born of earth, so that even if you duplicate darkness, they cannot be measured. For generosity of the incomprehensible is unspeakable. All the more so that the one blessed has glorified and dismissed one entity of the single substance trinity, and it died to execute the will of the one who sent it. The third entity, the dreadful, with the agreement of the two, solicited relentlessly, thus in a single virtuous act, there is an example of agreement undivided, the soul for the living and the word for the rational, the radiance for glory and the image for eternity. Supporting in providing life, thrifty in mercy, resolute in accomplishing intentions, ready to rescue, generous in bounty, merciful in concession, perfect in infinity, infinity, wealthy in resources, genial in forbearance, exalted in intangibility, the single trinity, perfect in the three entities, blessed forever. Amen. This is just a little excerpt from one of his many prayers. But you can see how beautiful and profound that prayer is, something that you and I um, could never necessarily develop on our own. But when we pray that prayer from our heart, that prayer which acknowledges um, the sanctity and, and the work of the Holy Trinity uh, through the person of Jesus Christ, then we become enlightened. Um, so those prayers are a guiding light for us as we try to express our own lives and our own selves in a sincere way through prayer. But of course, it doesn't end there. There are so, so many prayers that we have in the Armenian church. Uh, I want to share with you, of course, at some point I'll be reading um, the prayers of St. Nerses Shinorhali, uh, I Confess with Faith, and I've added a link to that PDF or that ebook down at the bottom of the uh, show notes for today's episode. We have, of course, um, the prayers for the healing of the sick, uh, which uh, are very important because praying for health is obviously something important that we do. And it doesn't end there. More importantly, we have the prayers that come to us through the Holy Bible. Um, you may be saying, what prayers in the Holy Bible? There's so many prayers in the Holy Bible, beginning with the Psalms, that if ever we feel lost, we don't know what to pray ourselves. If we only open up the Bible to the book of Psalms and we read those Psalms and make those prayers the prayers of our heart, then immediately we'll find our spirituality inflamed by the content and the passion uh, for God that are contained within those words. But we don't have to use these prayers. Personal prayer is about expressing our heart to God, opening up ourselves to God, 
and uh, being taking on that active role in this conversation that we have with our Creator. We talked about how in meditation, meditation is listening. Prayer is our part of the conversation, wherein we speak to God, and He wants to hear what we have to say. So when we open up the Bible to Gospel of Matthew, chapter 6, uh, Christ is very specific about how he says we should pray when he teaches his disciples and through them all of us the Lord's Prayer. Now, that isn't the only prayer that we can give, but he sets up sort of a template that we can follow to show us how it is that we should be praying. And there are some common elements that we can use from the Lord's Prayer in our personal prayers. One is acknowledgement. You know, uh, the Lord's Prayer begins with our Father who art in heaven. We begin the prayer by naming whom it is that we are praying to. And in this case, Christ uh, so radically, you know, referred to his Father in heaven in the most familiar terms, my, my Baba, my Daddy in heaven. In the most intimate of ways, he's acknowledging um, the creator of the universe. And he says we can as well. So whether we're praying to uh, the creator, um, God, or whether we're praying to Jesus Christ or to the Holy Spirit, or perhaps we're uh, engaged in intercessory prayer by praying to the saints, we should name them um, and call out to them and acknowledge who they are and what they have done. We have to put our trust in God. Um, when we're praying, uh, just as Christ says in the Lord's Prayer, give us our day, our daily bread, he's not saying, I want my daily bread, please give it to me. But what he's acknowledging is that God is going to provide for him what he needs. Um, and this act of putting faith in God, trusting in God, uh, is, uh, I think, very crucial in our understanding of what prayer is. In Armenian, the word for prayer is arotk, okay? And the root of that word is ar, which you might find in words like aragel or arachel, um, which uh, events um, you know, to call upon or to call out to, um, to request, um, to plead. So a prayer becomes a way of pleading with the Lord, to reaching out to him, to calling upon him. Um, but, of course, the most common form of prayer for all of us is to ask something from God that we feel as though we need. Um, but when we ask for that thing, just like Christ, we have to be uh, acknowledging that we're putting our faith in God, that he is going to provide it for us according to our needs and our wants. In the evening prayer of the Armenian church, one of the prayers very boldly says, for you know our needs and our wants greater than we can know or comprehend. And so um, we are simply going through the motion of expressing our trust in the Lord that he is able to provide for us exactly what we need. One of the uh, renowned saints of the Armenian church, Saint Stepano Sunetsi, said about prayer, simply ask to be able to find, to, simply ask to be able to search for that which you need to find. And in this way, we're asking God to enable us in our lives, enable us to uh, be his hands, enable us to walk the path that he has put us on, enable us to grow closer to him. Prayer is also an important means by which we express gratitude. We can't fail to express gratitude through our prayer. Um, one of the profound uh, quotes from the primate of the Western Diocese that I've always loved is he says about prayer that prayer mirrors our lives. In fact, where do I have that book? Prayer mirrors your life, publication of the Western Diocese. But it's so true because we're reflecting the state of our life at any given moment onto God. And he's receiving that, but something reflects back as well. Gratitude, when we express gratitude through our prayers, uh, we become more attuned to things in our life for which we should be grateful. It becomes like a discipline. And we grow in joy because we become aware of all the things that we should be grateful for in our life. Uh, and lastly, I'll put an asterisk on this one, is pray for others. And I can't stress this enough. 
uh, one thing that often goes overlooked about the Lord's Prayer is even though it's a personal prayer, it's said in plural. Okay? Our Father, who art in heaven, give us our daily bread. Um, so the person who prays the Lord's Prayer isn't simply praying for themselves, my Father in heaven, give me my daily bread. No, he's praying for humanity. He's praying for all the children of God. And prayer becomes such an important opportunity to exercise compassion in our lives. When we take that moment in time in our prayer to remember the people uh, who truly need God's love and mercy in their life, then we become more attuned to those people's sufferings. We become more sensitive. So just as we were talking about with gratitude, you know, our life, our compassion is mirrored unto God it reflects back to us and into the world. We become more sensitive to the plight of others. We become more willing and able to help them and to reach out uh, when we soften our heart in this way through prayer. Before I continue, uh, I want to share with you uh, today's guest. Uh, his name is Father uh, Yerishe Kasachikian. Father Yerishe is a, is a is an old friend of mine. We were ordained as deacons together many years ago, and um, we followed a similar path in training for the priesthood. And uh, I really wanted to talk to him today about prayer because he's got such a, um, a profound, I believe, uh, dialogue within his spirituality. Um, he's sensitive in, uh, I think, very meaningful ways that uh, gives depth to his own prayers. And I wanted to talk to him about that. Last week's interview went so great. And uh, I'm excited that we can uh, hear from a new guest, Father Yerishe. Here we go. Sirli derhaid ornetsek. Yer ornetsek, derhaid jan. Der Yerishe, so happy to have you here on uh, spiritual practices. Um, you know, you and I have been friends for a long time. We were ordained as deacons together. How many years ago? I don't know. I, over 10 years ago, right? Yes, I think we're getting close. Yeah. And, um, and now, you know, uh, you're ordained uh, as, a, as a pastor, a parish priest in the Armenian Church, serving in Sacramento. And, uh, you know, I'm excited to, to have the opportunity to work with you. Um, and today we're going to be talking about prayer. And, you know, prayer isn't um, obviously something unfamiliar to us as, uh, as priests. Prayer is an important part of what we do, but prayer is an important part of every Christian's life. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was hoping you and I could just have a conversation about uh, the role that prayer plays in our life. Um, you know, sometimes it can be very straightforward and sometimes it can be complicated. Um, mm -hmm. But I just want to start off by asking you, um, what does prayer mean to you? Um, what prayer means to me? I, I would probably say that I, that, uh, uh, the meaning of prayer personally, me, uh, it's very essential for me, I would say for my, uh, spiritual life, um, and, uh, for, uh, my communication, my relationship with God. Uh, maintaining that relationship and communication with God. So I, I guess I would say that as we perhaps commonly know and have heard uh, that a prayer is the uh, uplifting of our hearts to God. But I would say at the same time for me personally, um, it, it's, it's what keeps me going. It's what helps me um, to maintain, uh, you know, my focus into what I'm trying to do in life, what I'm, you know, my service as a priest, and um, and my life overall. I think it helps me, um, you know, be focused, see what's important, the main things um, that you know I'm called to do, and ask God for guidance. So I would say mainly that. So. Um... In your life, uh, I'm sure there are many different ways that you pray. For example, when we pray together in church on Sunday morning, that's a type of prayer, right? That's like a, a, a communal prayer. And then there's private prayer. And then there are different ways that maybe we 
uh, pray privately, you know, different occasions when we're called to pray or different styles or different approaches that we take in our prayer. In your life, could you identify maybe some different ways that you pray or some different um, occasions when you're called to prayer? Um, as a priest, I would say when visitate during visitations, for example, in a hospital um, or other settings, you know, when there is someone who could be um, having an issue in their life, uh, I could be meeting with them. You know, I may say a prayer with them. When I'm visiting someone in the hospital, I may say a prayer for them. And, uh, you know, both me and the, the patient would focus at the moment uh, and, you know, say a prayer. Uh, mainly asking God to bless the person, strengthen the person, uh, you know, keep them healthy, both physically and spiritually. As far as practices, I would say that... Uh, Personally, uh, personal prayer uh, over uh, the years, what has been common for me is uh, perhaps praying uh, at night and also in the morning, sometime during the day, uh, if time permits. And uh, I would say that um, I like praying I'm on my knees uh, when I'm praying, especially in the evenings, in the mornings. And, um, you know... So there aren't any specific prayers that I that I may pray. Um, I would just uh, at, at the moment uh, focus on what has happened to me during the day. I try to uh, sit a little bit in silence and um, concentrate on the fact that I am in the presence of God. I'm praying to God and um, try to pray and offer my heart and uh, what has been happening to me during that day for example um, and uh, kind of um, you know focus on those items and pray to God for yeah. guidance or whatever maybe forgiveness and other things perhaps um, so mainly those I would say so um, one of, you, you talked about how you kind of reflect on what's happened uh, during your day and you, you open your heart to God, you share all of those thoughts and those feelings with him. Um, are there times when in your private prayer that you set aside for praying for other people? I do. I do. Usually as priests will get requests uh, to say prayers for other, other people. Um, I keep a paper with me with the names of the requests, um, for the people that um, I need to pray. I pray for them um, during private prayer. I also pray for them during the divine liturgy as well. And um, how important do you think it is? Well, first I want to ask you, uh, what impact do you think that has on yourself and others, that, that uh, time that you set aside in prayer to remember other people and their circumstances? One of the impacts I would say is the... It, it, if I, I face a reality in that case, for example, I would say that prayer is not just about praying for me, but praying for other people and uh, believing in the, um, the, the, the miracle of prayer, I would say, and believing that whenever I pray for other people or when we together as a group for pray for other people, um, that, um, we put an effort in that and of course with humility ask uh, God to uh, hear us and to uh, answer our prayers. Is there a, a time that you can think of in your own life or in the life of uh, your parish when you felt certain to some degree that God has heard your prayer and um, you know you you, you realize that, you felt grateful for it. Um, is there any time that you can think of? I mean, and, and this is, I'm talking about your entire life, not just in your capacity as a priest. Mm -hmm. um, very interesting that I usually, I would honestly, to be honest to say is that, you know, I can't point out to something and say that, there you go, God has heard my prayers and, you know, I prayed for this thing and 
God has heard my prayers and that's that's an answer from God. I usually uh, would say I have a difficulty pointing that out. But at the same time, I believe that God um, is always with me as God is with everyone. But in this case, uh, it probably has to do with the reality of what prayer is. Prayer is wouldn't just be just asking God for something uh, and then expecting in return an answer. Prayer is something that um, helps us maintain uh, that relationship or the reality of living our faith on a daily basis. And uh, also knowing and understanding that what we pray for, of course, may not be answered. But at the same time, um, there is much more to, uh, to faith. There is much more to prayer. There is much more to knowing God and uh, understanding the influence of God in everything that happens in life on a daily basis, whether we're driving a car or walking in nature, for example. Mm -hmm. um, you know, sometimes our understanding of prayer, our understanding of God can be limited, for example, due to examples in life or uh, due to, as you know, our, our upbringing. Understanding that God is everywhere kind of uh, brings us to an attention. The attention of um, knowing that, you, you know, we can always be open to God and we can always seek Him um, in our lives. And therefore, we don't have to wait for a specific time for prayer. Uh, we don't have to wait for a specific time to ask for something or uh, thank Him for something. So, um, in a way, what I hear you saying is that prayer has an impact on the prayer's life um, beyond simply what it is uh, that God does or doesn't grant us. So, the actual practice or action of prayer influences your perspective, um, your uh, understanding of God, um, your outlook on the world. Is this what you're saying? Um, that's part of it that I, I think part, that's part of what I'm saying. But at the same time, I think uh, sometimes, uh, you know, the, the reality of prayer is one thing and our understanding of it is another thing. That's what, what I'm trying yeah. to say. And I think the reality of prayer is much deeper than, you know, what I may come to experience and what others may come to experience. So it says a lot about the fact that, um uh, you know, it's also a journey and that we are called to uh, be faithful to that journey, to be committed. And at the same time, uh, you know, always seek uh, for for growth and um, always ask God for guidance to, you know, open up uh, the meaning of prayer or the depth of prayer for us, for each of us. Mm -hmm. And... Um... So is that how you would, if anybody, say, for example, anybody watching tonight has had an experience where they felt as though, you know, they were praying for something, but they didn't feel that that prayer was answered. Um, you know, I think that that was something that we were already touching upon in your, in your last response. Um, do you feel as though that the, that perhaps their expectations are part of the issue or that, um, Maybe, uh, maybe their prayers could have been answered, but not in the way that they were expecting. How would you have that conversation with with somebody who was struggling with this? I would uh, think that our expectations are fine, just the way they are, uh, because um, that tells us that that's where we are. So we need to be honest with ourselves, um, and at the same time, of course, our Prayers may be answered differently, as you pointed out. That I, uh, with a simple answer is, you know, we always hear um, either in sermons or in conversations, you know, someone saying that um, God does not answer our prayers. Perhaps if it, you know God doesn't answer our prayers, due to the fact that God knows what's better for us. Um, but that's the sim. It's the simple way, uh, you know. Of, of being being said mm -hmm. um, I, there's much more to it I would say um, if our prayers are not answered for example um, and 
you know, we we face that fact and say, well, I've been praying, uh, you know, for for a long time, and my prayers are not being answered. Perhaps, you know, we look, we need to, if we are in a situation like that, we need to look at it from a different angle. Um, but, you know, the, the reality is that we need to be where we are, and um, well, that's okay. And we need to ask for guidance. Yeah. Um, what I really we... like about what you're saying is that um, we don't pray from a, a perspective of who we wish we were or right. who we think God wants us to be, but we need to pray as ourselves now. Uh, mm -hmm. And even if, even if um, perhaps we're broken or understanding is faulty, but the key is to be sincere in our prayer. Um, would you say that that's important? I I I agree. I agree totally that I, I think yeah. that's very important for us um, because we're called to be honest and sincere. We can uh, pray in our own words um, when we're praying to God. Sometimes it becomes a hindrance because uh, if we are searching for specific prayers um, for our to use to pray, uh, those can help us. They can give us ideas, but at the same time. We can always use our own words to pray to God with the understanding that we are we are in God's presence. I think that is an important aspect when we are praying. Uh, we may have, hear different perspectives, such as, you know, God is our friend, um, God is our brother, or so on and so forth. Uh, there could be many others, but um, well, what I wanted to focus in this case, um, the fact that I mentioned is, we need to, uh, you know, be pray with the understanding that um, we are in the presence of uh, the Creator, the Almighty, and a loving God, forgiving God, of, of course, and a patient God, and a God that, uh, you know, what, wants what's best for us. What would you say to uh, somebody who said, um, you know, I believe in the power of prayer, but I'm uncomfortable praying because... I don't know if I'm doing it right, or I'm not really sure what's the best way to go about, you know, being somebody who prays. What would you say? Uh, you mentioned sincerity, that I, so I would uh, kind of uh, say the same thing, thing, be sincere about prayer. And if you want to look into specific ways of prayer, you can do so. You can always talk to your priest. Um, or you can do your own research about specific ways of praying. Um, in this case, if we're talking about the Orthodox Church, Armenian Orthodox Church, or the other other Orthodox churches, which uh, could be helpful for us, uh, you know, give us guidance or ways of prayer. But I, I would say not to make that a, a hindrance for you to be able to pray. There, are, we, we, you know, we can't be perfect about it, and uh, it is best to pray instead of, you know, waiting for a specific moment or a specific way to use for prayer. Awesome. Derad, I want to thank you for your time um, and your patience, though we had a few technical difficulties. By the time the people are watching this, they won't even know. Um, but uh, I thank you so much, and uh, I'll ask you to pray for all of us. Um, and uh, we will also pray that... Uh, that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ give you strength during this Lenten season in your ministry. Thank you, Derai. Uh, it's wonderful. I'm uh, glad you're doing this program. And uh, may God strengthen you and strengthen everyone and help us um, in our prayer life. Thank you, Derai. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye. I hope you uh, enjoyed that. Uh, time that uh, that Yerisha and myself had together. One of the things that he spoke about, which I thought was very interesting, was we, we spoke about um, God answering our prayers. And I think that his approach was very interesting because he began by saying that, you know, he doesn't like to say that this or that was God's response to his prayer. Um, because I think that we have to take a humble approach which with regard to um you know god's response to our prayers uh perhaps 
um, God was responding to our prayers in this way. Perhaps he was responding to somebody else's prayer. Perhaps he was responding to our collective prayer. Perhaps we didn't see the response, but it came nonetheless in a way that we couldn't comprehend. Being humble uh, and putting our faith in God means understanding that uh, Christ has made an agreement with us, that when we pray to him in his name, he will answer our prayers. But nonetheless, those answers may not always be evident to us. And we should be careful about what we put our finger on and say, that was the will of God. It's very presumptuous, presumptuous on our part. But I understand that this aspect of prayer is perhaps one of the hardest things for the faithful to wrestle with. Um, people who pray in good faith about things that are very important, uh, particularly the health of a loved one uh, or their own health, and don't see those prayers answered in the way that they expect can often become disheartened. Um, they may find themselves uh, pulling away from their faith, um, sometimes out of, uh, of bitterness. Nonetheless, um, the reasons uh, are numerous and often inexplicable. Uh, when I comfort a loved one, or some, when I comfort somebody who lost a loved one, for whom they prayed uh, incessantly, uh, for example, two years ago, there was a young man who we lost to brain cancer, and I was sitting next to the mother as she sat at his bedside praying um, that he would be healed until the last moment. Um, my heart is filled with compassion because I understand what it's like to stand in the face of something so painful and to wish so hard that your deepest prayer would be answered. And often our prayers with regard to our health and our safety, they are answered. Um, and we can't clean away those circumstances when they aren't by saying, Perhaps it was God that he should have died. We can't accept uh, that sort of explanation because we know uh, that, for example, that young man, his body was a temple of God. He was a man of good faith. I don't believe that it was God's will that he should be taken from us. But nonetheless, we are all part of a world um, of decline. We're all part of a world that because of our own sin um, has within it death. And um, we still must remain ever faithful in the conversation with God to be able to relieve ourselves of that sin so that um, as best as able under the circumstances that we live in this fallen world, um, we can live for his glory. Um, I think that prayer should be, understand, be understood as, as opposed to being a request it's more like syncing up with God. It's more like getting on the same page with him. Over time, the more regularly we pray, then the more we begin to understand him better and uh, the ways in which we benefit by putting our faith in him. And uh, the more certainly he is able to bless us and uh, those in our lives. Having said all of that, I wanted to share with you um, something in my life that I believe was a, uh, an opportunity when, when God answered my prayers and the prayers of many people. Some of you know that um, many years ago, about 10 years ago, I was on a plane uh, which was destined for New York, and there was uh, a problem with that plane. There was, uh, there was uh, the front landing gear had a problem. It couldn't uh, retract properly, and it was stuck in an awkward position. It was stuck sideways. Um, and as a result, we circled around Los Angeles for something about four, five hours until um, they were ready to attempt an emergency landing on the runway at LAX. And this situation had kind of caught the attention of the news, and it was on uh, not just the local news, but on CNN and Fox News and you know MSNBC. And we were on a JetBlue flight where we were seeing the live feed from these cable news stations talking about uh, this peril that our flight was in. People were saying, oh, who knows what could happen? The plane could explode when it lands because the, the gear gives way. Um, and it was a frightening time. And it was a moment in my life when I asked myself, 
I want to say the prayer of my life, just as uh, Archbishop Hovnan Derderian said, I want to fully reflect myself to God. Um, firstly, hopefully, that he should save us from this peril, but then also simply so that I would have said my full piece to him. And uh, that had a profound impact on me in my own spiritual maturation. But obviously, I'm here talking to you, and the plane didn't explode. And uh, I want to share with you a moment uh, from, from that story. Oops. Second. Let's all take a second here. here the plane is Let's all say a little prayer as this pilot touches down with 139 people. Ten feet above the runway right now. Ten feet above. And now you see those main landing gear. This is it. Touching down. This and there, is you it. can see. Now there. he holds that Beautiful. nose off. You see, he holds it up yep. as much as he can now. And we'll see what happens here. He'll hit the landing gear, and he's holding it steady right now. So we'll far, see. so good. There we go. And it does it. not it's snap not back into place. But you can oh. see that front uh, wheel is not uh, it's not smoking right now, but the back wheel leaving a trail of smoke. Now the front wheel there, so it's yeah. grinding. He's got the air brakes on. A lot fire. of sparks right now. Sparks yeah. flying. It's burning. There. And you can see it's holding up a lot of uh, smoke and sparks now coming down. Fire trucks in trail right now, and it looks like he's going to have to take up the entire length yes. of the runway wow. here. Uh, but look at what this a great right job. now. It does not collapse. It he is did staying it. in place. Look at that he grinding did it. the wheels right there. Down. Burned that rubber absolutely off, but he came down Excellent. perfectly. Now here come oh, the fire trucks. well done. Watch this. Amazing. And there you see was the moment where the flight uh, flight had a successful emergency landing. Looking at that flight after we landed, I said, Parkastudzo. Praise be to the Lord. Um, our prayers are indeed, I believe, we believe, and we should believe, often answered in evident and in evident ways um, throughout the cosmos. That's the Lord's providence. I want to conclude uh, today's episode by uh, talking to you again about the journals that I hope you're keeping. Um, this is with regard to prayer. This is the, the most important way that you could utilize your journal. Um, you have to use your journal to keep track. One, write your prayers in your journal sometimes. You know, writing them down will give you insight, especially later on into, you know, your own spiritual maturation as you find what it is that you're saying and praying for is changing over time. Secondly, in your journal, um, you need to keep track of some of the things that I mentioned, especially with regard to uh, things that you're grateful for and also people that you should be praying for, just like Derrière Richet mentioned, um, in his interview, how he keeps a piece of paper with him where he always has a list of people he should be praying for. Do this. Um, make a piece of paper, just a piece of printer paper if you want, with two columns. One is things that I'm grateful for, and the other is uh, things that are people for whom I should be praying for. And make that list and add to it as things come. And what you'll also find is that the list of people for whom you should be praying for over time, you might find that those prayers are answered. You can cross them off the list, and you'll see the living effect of your prayer and the prayers of others uh, in this world. And when you look at that list, that growing list of things for which you're grateful, then you'll find your heart opening to God. Uh, and you'll live life uh, with a more profound sense of appreciation for the greatest gift that God gave us, your life. Um, I want to thank you once again for sharing this evening with me. We went a little long today. I'm sorry, I think it was because I shared that personal story, but I hope that you appreciated it. Um, as I always conclude these show, these episodes, uh, I want to say that uh, I'm praying for you. Um, and those of you that are participating that I know of by name, I'm praying for all of you by name, um, that you know the, this process that we're a part of, this journey that we're all on together, this land to uh, practice our faith uh, is a fruitful one for you that has a benefit in your life and the life of those around you. Um, and with that, we'll be concluding today's episode. God bless all of you, and have a good evening. So you said, use your own words. Um, oh, we're... I guess seem like we're this... We're back, we're back. Okay.
it's it seems like it's cutting off from time to time, but we're back. Yeah, we're almost done. Um, we we can should should I start? Yeah. Um, uh, we can use our prayer. Uh... <laughs> it's okay. 